welcome to the first ever episode number zero of the Infinite Canvas Screencast. I'm your host, Rachel Neighbors. Before we get started today, I'd like to give some shout outs to the people whose creative efforts have helped make this possible. First, I'd like to thank Jonathan Stevens for his wonderful works on the opening animatic. I didn't have, and, and actually the logo too. I didn't have to guide him very much. I just showed up with some ideas and said more of this, more of that, and he made a really, really nice video out of it. And I'd also like to thank Robert Pitts, also known as Rob Sickmood on the SoundCloud, for making our opening music. It sounds really spiffy. It looks really spiffy. Thank you guys so much. So the story behind this screencast is that I've been wanting to find a way to reach out to people who are interested in web animations and telling new and unusual stories and exciting new ways on the internet. And I thought about doing a podcast, I thought about doing a blog, and in the end I found out that the screencast is really the best way to go. Basically, I can record myself talking, record things happening on the screen, and everyone can go home feeling full and happy at the end of the day. We'll see how it goes. I kept putting it off for about a year because I felt like, no, I've got to learn the, I've got to go learn the technology better so I can take really professional looking, uh, professionally looking videos and, you know, I feel sad for poor Jonathan and Rob because they gave me these assets a year ago, I think, and we're really excited about it and I haven't taught anything but go speak at conferences and make animations in the past year. So I guess it was a complete waste of time, but it's been a long time in coming. One of the reasons for starting this was I wanted an excuse to interview people I really look up to under the guise of professionalism and be like, yes, yes, you need to come and be on the Infinite Canvas screencast. But I figured if I kept putting that kind of pressure on myself, I was going to keep chicken out, chickening out of episode one, let alone episode zero. So no interviews this time around. That said, I have a lot of questions like, where should this go online? Should it be on Vimeo? Should it be on YouTube? Should it be on G Google Plus? I don't know where it should live. Uh, I don't even know if it needs like a Twitter account. I hate managing multiple Twitter accounts. I just started my new company, Tin Magpie. Um, this is our website because I'm still designing it. It's such a pain in the butt to like, everything needs a page. Everything needs its own Twitter stream. Rawr. But I'll go where the people who want to pay attention to the screencast are. I encourage you, if you enjoy the screencast, get in touch with me and let me know what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of, and where we can hunt you down. You can contact me uh, via... right here. Aloha at rachelneighbors.com. Oh wow, look at that! My icon font's totally broken for some reason. That's lovely. Don't you love it when you visit a site you've designed and it's like, wait, that was working two days ago. What happened? Mm. That's what you get working on the bleeding edge of things. For instance, Nyantuna over here. Oh man, this guy, he doesn't move anymore. I got to fix that. I'm thinking about, uh, I just got this testing device. Yeah, testing device. I just got this testing device. It's uh, this tiny little Windows 8 laptop from HP. Look at it, isn't it adorable? Sort of. And I, I got it specifically because all the reviews said it's underpowered and terrible. And I'm like, yes, worst case scenario. And finally, I can test on Internet Explorer with touchscreen, right? And so I'm going through all of my animations and finding out like this one doesn't work right. This one does. This one doesn't. This one, the arrows are missing on it for some reason. Uh, so I'm thinking it might be fun to do a screencast or a talk just about all the different things that didn't work when I finally looked at these in Internet Explorer. Some things work and it's surprising and some things just fail hard. So I take it that even though Internet Explorer says it supports the CSS animation spec, yeah, it probably that's like it supports the CSS animation spec. Ah, so much fun. Speaking of cool things, I'll show you this cool thing that I made. This is another installation of that series I just showed you. 
And this is a collaboration between myself and the awesome Russian artist Zamag. And also there's some music that can play and it's done by this lady, Incognizant. I'm a little jealous because Zamag did Incognizant's icon, but I had to do my own. <sighs> I think I did a good job of imitating her style, but still I wanted to have my icon drawn. But I just realized that it's we're three ladies and we made this happen. Got the artist and the storyteller, the coder, and the musician, and it's, that's pretty awesome. But anyway, every, every once in a while, Zemeg comes to me and we do a new installation for her interactive graphic novel. And this one is like, I think page number 47. You can go read the full thing on her site. You can go read the whole thing on her site. The Black Brick Road of Oz. And it's a really excellent series. Just look at how beautiful her artwork is. She is still in school. She is like a teenager. I, I think she's lying. I think one day I'm going to find out that she's like some little old man who used to work for Disney and has been, you know, pulling the wool over my eyes for years. But anyway, oh, if you really like what we do, you can give us money and it will help further our efforts. She needs a new computer. And I need extra time so that I can build this whole thing into a Kindle app. So what this does is, oh yeah, it's a drag and drop game. She said that she wanted to do like a, a drag and drop game that people could play with. And I said, well, that's a great idea. I know the perfect HTML5 API for that. This is using the HTML5 drag and drop API. And it's so much fun. Uh, the hardest part about doing this was finding ways to speed up going through all the CSS and the images and generating a bunch of objects and where they go. I had to create scripts that worked in both Photoshop for pouring through her layers. And she's a really awesome artist because she labels everything and puts them in little groups for me. So I can create, I can create uh, scripts that can do that for me. And then I made JavaScript that would basically run through the DOM and pick out what went where. And it was interesting trying to get everything playing playing nicely together. So anyway, it's a lot of fun. Check it out. It's at my site, rachelneighbors.com slash blackbrickroad. And it's all available as well on GitHub. If you want to poke through the source, I really did a great job of commenting all of the JavaScript. And I would love to go in more depth, but maybe that's for episode one or another talk or a course or something. But it's really well commented. So if you can't control yourself and you just gotta know how I did all this stuff right now go do it but be aware it doesn't work on tablets and it certainly doesn't work on uh, on Internet Explorer yet it doesn't work on tablets because I've got to figure out how to make drag and drop work with touch and that is a whole another story probably gonna end up using hammer.js but moving along so just to in in the <clears throat> spirit of full disclosure I am using Camtasia to take this. It looks really cool, doesn't it? Back when I said a year ago that I was gonna put the screencast together, Camtasia totally caught wind of it. And one of the representatives was like, we support women doing screencasts, have some free software. And I got this. And if you think this looks awesome, it does. It's actually, it's a little intimidating to look at the user interface at first, but I, it turns out that all you really need to do is hit record and you can kind of stumble your way around through them and people look at it and they'll go wow this looks really cool how'd you get your little face down there and all of that it's like i just use the default settings it looks really impressive if you have to reply to interviews nudge wink you can just shove it in dropbox but full disclosure i am using some software that some people gave me i don't know if that makes me um i don't know if this means that i'm officially endorsing them but i do use their product and it does look nice so thank you very much TechSmith for donating software for the forces of good. Moving along, a couple weeks ago, I started my own company, Tin Magpie. Tin Magpie is, uh, this is the website, as you can see, not a lot happening there. More is happening on our Twitter, of course, Tin Magpie. It's, uh, it's a magpie's Twitter, so don't expect much intelligible information coming out of it from right now. But uh, you can see some ideas shaping up for the website. It's a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun working on the logo. Once again, I had some help from the wonderful Jonathan Stevens in creation of this. It was a lot of fun. I did the illustration. He helped with the uh, finding the right font. 
and it looks really nice. But what's Tin Mai Pai? Well, basically it's, I, I wanna do, after traveling the world and speaking at conferences last year, I decided that I wanted to do this sort of thing for a living. And I wasn't able to find a place to work at where they'd say, sure, Rachel, go make cool drag and drop games and animations using CSS, go do that. When people want front end developers, they tend to want people who can make a site using AngularJS or be gatekeepers to a CSS repo. And I totally get that, but that's not really what I want to do. And so I'm going to find out how to make that make money for me so far. I've got some clients lined up, my first quarter's book, and I will probably end up talking about some of those projects here in the future. So, hope to hear more on the Tin Magpie front. All right, other update. I am going to be giving a JavaScript basics course at Treehouse. Yep, it's gonna come up sometime after February, probably around April, and it's gonna be super cool. I really, after giving my JavaScripts for Designers talk this year, which you can find on my website, a recording on YouTube actually, uh, good people at jQuery Portland put all of their talks on YouTube this year, so you can see it there. After I gave it, I realized that we really need the introduction to JavaScript for people who aren't programmers. There are a lot of introductions to JavaScript, but very few of them come from the direction of explaining what an object is and then getting down dirt and dirty with the document object model. So. I am going to endeavor to do so. Ah, all right, so I asked people before I started today, what would you like to see me show you in my screencast? And I only got one response. Basically, it was like, what's your process, Rachel? And I thought, well, what kind of questions have I had about my process recently? Well. When it came to working on Tin Magpie and on a lot of projects, people ask me, where do you come up with your color schemes? The truth is, I'm not that great at picking out color schemes. So what I do is I go to colorlovers.com and I think of some magical keywords. For instance, uh, if I were having to come up with a design around a rock and roll website, I'd be like, hmm, music. And I would search for palettes. So you can see, you can search on palettes, patterns, pattern templates, blah, 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 or individual colors. I go straight for palettes. And then, hmm, music, huh? Brought up all these cool things. Then I will just start copying different palettes here using screen capture tool like this. Unfortunately, you can't really, these aren't images. You can't save them. They're generated with like CSS. So that's unfortunate. If I could make one suggestion to color lovers, it'd be that they'd make images out of these so I wouldn't have to screen cap them. I could just save them all into a folder. Anyway, I grab a bunch of them, I take them into Photoshop, and I select the pieces that I like between each of them. So I might grab that one because, yeah, that's nice with this because it's cool, but it, it needs to be edgier. It's not very rock and roll, right? So I'm going to look up uh, meta. I think metal's pretty hard. Oh, it's still so bright and chirpy. So I basically, oh, except for this, oxidation. That looks pretty metal. So I do this a couple of times. Go into Photoshop and then I start picking and choosing what I like. So that I'm not just using somebody's palette, but I'm using two or three palettes, the best bits that I liked. Oddly enough, they usually have like a common color. So next awesome thing. Everything is a remix, I did a case study of the iPhone, and it's really worth watching. It's only about five minutes long, and it's worth watching from the beginning to the end. It talks about skeuomorphism and the difference between iOS 6 and iOS 7, and a lot about flat design. It doesn't talk much about animation, but it's very interesting to hear how, uh, how we took this multi-touch thing and how the iPhone capitalized on that and how skeuomorphism was used to get people to adopt this totally new technology into their everyday lives and now how it's swung in the opposite direction and different manufacturers can get away from that because people have accepted it so readily as this uh, tool that they can use. It's totally worth reading. Everything is a remix case study of the iPhone. Check it out. 
Another site that's totally worth checking out is user onboarding. I, I know this is 100% related to animations or web interactions, but I love anything where people break down how an interaction boils down. And as you can see, when you hover, it zooms in and you can use your arrow keys actually to switch between things. So, and you know, it zooms in, it tells you about what, to, it tells, tells you what they're doing and why and where things could be made better. I think it's very exciting. And if you're at all interested in like user interfaces and onboarding people, getting people up to speed on using a new interface, like especially here, uh, how they make it super easy to anticipate the end goal. This is something I wouldn't have thought about. I only signed up for Tumblr once. I hadn't even realized that they did this little, kind of like you saw in the drag and drop game I demonstrated earlier, these, this little dashed line indicating what goes where. That's pretty clever. So if you're into UI, if you're a UI nerd or a game nerd and you have to do a lot of getting people used to using different games, this is worth checking out useronboard.com, kind of like baby on board, just with users. Other cool things to check out, if visible.js. I love if visible.js. This thing kept me up till 3 a.m. one night because I was so excited about it. So if visible.js is super awesome because what it does is it finds a way to tell if the tab is visible, if it's not. It's got little event listeners, for when you're focused on the tab or when you're not focused, also known as blur. And it can also have idling times so that if somebody hasn't done anything in that tab for a while, it'll pause. Let me see if I can get the demo out. But I thought that this would be the coolest thing for like building a Tamagotchi. So you see, it says, if you wait 30 seconds, I'll sleep. So let's not do anything for 30 seconds. And look at it go. I, can we, we really can't spend 30 seconds waiting for it to, to sleep, but just think you could use the JavaScript to fire off something that would like cause a little pet to fall asleep or something cute. There's just ah, so much, so much that you can do with this. And I even used it to turn the music off when people are on the Black Brick Road site. It does have music. And if you turn it on and then you went over to another tab, it would look kind of sad. But this guy, Zach Saucier, has been, or Saucier, I don't know how you pronounce it, has been posting some pretty cool articles on CSS tricks, including this one on controlling CSS animations and transitions with JavaScript. And it's pretty darn cool. I really like his work. I like what he's been posting. Um, and this was back in September. And he did another one recently, back on the 16th. He's, I am a big fan. I haven't figured out where he is on Twitter yet, but I'll figure it out eventually, and then I will stalk him, as only people can stalk each other on Twitter. All right, so thank you for listening to this very first screencast. It's been very awesome and unscripted and interesting. I am honored that you have spent however many minutes of your life you won't get back with us. And I'm 100% open to hearing what you would like me to talk about. Do you want to know more about animations? Do you want me to walk you through how different things work, show you my newest projects, show you things that are in progress, new tools, new techniques? Is there somebody you'd like me to try to interview if they'll return my calls? Let me know. I'm 100% all ears. Just drop me a line in the comments or email me directly. If you would like to see this on a different channel, let me know. For instance, you hate YouTube, you want it on Vimeo. I have no idea what the going standard is anymore. I'm not a video nerd. I'm an animation nerd. There's a difference. So with that said, peace out.